to my lecture. I am Dr. Langmuir, and today I'll be telling you all about nanogenerators. I'll be talking about various concepts relating to the history, mechanism, and fabrication of nanogenerator technology. First up, two types of nanogenerators can be used to harness mechanical energy. Piezoelectric nanogenerators convert kinetic energy into electric energy, while triboelectric nanogenerators convert mechanical energy into electrical energy. The first topic I will cover are piezoelectric nanogenerators. Piezoelectric materials have the ability to generate an AC voltage when subjected to a mechanical stress or vibration, or to vibrate when subjected to an AC voltage or both. Scientists have known about piezoelectricity for many years. In 1880, the Curie brothers demonstrated the link between crystal structure and piezoelectrical phenomena. In 1917, P. Longevin began to perfect an ultrasonic submarine detector. They eventually succeeded, and this kicked off research and development of technologies incorporating piezoelectric materials. The potential difference after deformation roots from the wartzite crystal structure of the zinc oxide nanowires. A potential difference is caused after compression or deformation. This video from Dr. Wang's group at Georgia Tech shows how zinc oxide nanowire generators can be used to harness energy from a living heartbeat. As you can see, with each heartbeat, the piezoelectric nanogenerator generates electricity. The second topic I've been focusing my research on is triboelectric nanogenerators. To understand how these work, I first need to introduce the concept of triboelectrification. Triboelectrification, also sometimes referred to as contact electrification, occurs in all materials. It is the phenomenon of different materials becoming electrically charged after frictive contact. Here are some common materials ranked by the triboelectric properties. When two come in contact, a transfer of electrons occurs according to the relative tendencies to lose or gain electrons. Illustrated here is the mechanism involved in vertical contact separation. When the electrodes are attached to the two materials selected for the triboelectric effects, an AC current can be generated. In step one, the materials come into contact and gain opposite charges. As they are released, there's a charge separation and this drives a current. Once fully released, there is no current. As the materials are brought back into contact again, the current now fl flows in the opposite direction. Once they are in contact, again, one cycle is complete. A single electrode-based triboelectric nanogenerator is introduced as a more practical and feasible design for some applications. The system becomes more robust when the circuit is stationary, what lets environmental contacts act as a current inducer. For example, the circuit could be part of a railing, and as fingers touch it, electrons will be injected from the skin to the PDMS, since the PDMS is more triboelectrically negative than the skin. Once the skin is separated from the PDMS, it will induce a positive charge into the electrode, creating a current. The sliding mode works in a similar fashion except for the separation of charges occurs laterally as the two materials slide along one another. Current is continuously produced as the materials slide and is related to the rate at which the sliding occurs. This graph shows that area power density of triboelectric nanogenerators is increasing exponentially and have the greatest potential for high power applications. Ah, yes, DeGens, please come in. I'm here. It's been a while. What I've been hard at work perfecting my new technology. Would wow. you like to see? Yeah, it looks very interesting. Whoa. Right? So you just hit that and it harnessed energy to light up these LEDs? Precisely. It is a triboelectric nanogenerator. It works by harvesting the mechanical energy and using that to drive a current through these lights. Wow, that's awesome. It truly is a revolution. Would you like to see how it works? Yeah, please show me more. Follow me! When the materials touch, electrons flow from one to the other. When they are apart, a voltage develops. Yeah, so I'm wondering. Are there any applications that we can use this effect on? You know, I've been so focused on the science of it, I haven't really thought that far ahead. Could you think of any good ideas? Well, you know, maybe we can use that energy and store it in a battery or something like that. That's an excellent idea. You know, I think I have just the thing. All right. Whoa, so you just made an alternating current to power the LEDs continuously? I think, that, I think that's what I did. And if we could do it with this, we could put it perhaps 
on your shoes, or really any place that there's ambient mechanical energy, it, that would normally be wasted. That's awesome. So you can perhaps harness the energy of ocean waves? That's one possibility. We should really get some people on this. Incredible. I think you're onto something, Langmuir. Jen, come to the lab immediately. Okay, I'll be there in a second. I'm here. Oh, Dejans, there you are. I've been waiting all day to show you my Arkenstone. What does it do? It harnesses ambient vibrational energy and converts it to electricity. How does that work? It uses piezoelectric zinc oxide nanowires. They work, but when they are deformed, the zinc oxide has a crystal structure such that bending causes an electric potential to be formed. This, along with what's called a shocky barrier on one of the ends, can drive an electric current. And you get many of these oriented in different directions, different ways to harness all the vibrational energy. And you could power, say, a small device. So I see these peaks on your computer. Yes. See, when we are talking, that's from the sound of our voice. See how it corresponds? Wow. Yeah. yeah. So our voice deforms the wires and produces electricity. Wow. Once again, truly amazing, Langmia. Like, yeah. I get that often. This isn't how I left my lab. What got? No! The Ark is stone! It's gone! Shen, quickly. I need you to come to my nano lab. My original workshop has been compromised. I have a mission for you. Yes, Dejan, come in. Tell me, what has happened? Tragedy has struck. The Arkansas, it's been stolen. Oh, no. I need you to go on a mission and retrieve it. Anything for you, Lemia. I'm so glad you're willing. But first, I can't let you go into the field alone. I've prepared to you several new technologies that utilize nanogenerators to harvest biomechanical energy. The first are these shoes. By using nanostructures like these on the surfaces of the triboelectric layers, current output can be drastically improved compared to the unmodified materials. This next gadget harnesses your biochemical energy to act as a glucose sensor. I'll inject it into you and it will monitor your glucose levels and wirelessly transmit them to your phone so you'll never succumb to a diabetic coma. This enzymatic biofuel cell is used to convert chemical energy into electricity. This one can convert energy from glucose and oxygen that are carried by your blood cells and will be able to power the sensor to alert you if your glucose levels are too low. The gold electrodes were patterned onto Captain Film. The glucose oxidase acts as an anode and the lacase acts as a cathode. The carbon nanotubes are used to help immobilize the particles and they help with electron flow, making the system more efficient. Glucose is electro-oxidized to gluconol acetone at the anode, which results in hydrogen atoms to be left in the solution, and two electrons to flow through the wire, producing a current. This current can be used to power the sensor. Then, dissolved oxygen is electro-reduced with lacase to form water, and this process will continue as long as there is enough glucose in your blood. The third device is a triboelectric nanogenerator that harnesses the rotational movement of your bike, and it stores it into these power modules that will give you a boost when you need it most. The final step is just to add a material with the proper surface area to maximize the output. The way this gadget works is from the relative rotation of your wheel and the bike frame. The aluminum power modules and captain coated spokes slide relative to the other so that the electrons will be injected from the aluminum power module to the inner surface of the Kapton film leaving net positive charges on the aluminum power module and net negative charges on the Kapton film. As your wheel rotates, it will induce an electric current, allowing your battery to charge. Your final gadget harnesses your biomechanical movements through the use of fibers coated in zinc oxide nanowires that work like I showed you before. When they are bent, they produce electricity. So these are woven throughout here to maximize your electrical output. This fiber-based hybrid nano generator is a 3D coaxial and fully integrated device containing a piezoelectric nanogenerator unit, output 2, in the core, and a triboelectric nanogenerator unit in the shell, output 1. 
the instantaneous output power density of the triboelectric and piezoelectric nanogenerators can achieve 42.6 and 10.2 milliwatts per meter squared, respectively. <laughs> so much power! Oh, you have full power! Okay. Hey, my phone's out. I guess it's no, it's mine! My power, go away! Dang, I really need to use my phone. Hey, man. I can help you out there. So, my shoe actually has a tribal electric nano generator that can store energy. Oh, my monitor is telling me my Google phone is so low. I better eat some sugar. Thank you.